This is the fan lobby, lobby alright, but there's no defendant. Hey guys, Craig here, welcome back to more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the previous episode, we heard everything Atlanta knew, knows about this murder, everything. Finally, we've actually got an idea of what's happening around here, and it all leads to one man. Chief of Police, Damon Gant. So today we are going to start off our final day in court, which means all the investigations in this Let's Play is now done. There's going to be no more investigations in the entire Let's Play, and this is a final trial. This feels weird because this is probably going to be my final recording session, and then I'm actually going to be moving on to a proper Let's Play. I'm kind of happy at the same time. Of course, I'm kind of sad because I've been doing this for so long. This is going to be over a hundred episodes long, this Let's Play. I was not expecting that at the least. But either way, enough rambling, let's get into the game. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if... Something's been happening behind the scenes. I actually got the voice right, you don't know how happy I am about that. Edworth. Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of 7777777 ID number is? Well, I've got a pretty strong hunch. If I'm not the only- it Looks like I'm not the only one who's already figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial hasn't reached a verdict yesterday is because there's still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he still hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from my list, I can call a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you said so much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. It's the first time he's done something like this. Lala's hiding something. And the only way you'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid, today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. My dog is sneezing in the background, jeez. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? So here we go, this is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. And now we are actually in court, all alone, no Emma. And probably Lana will appear now. The court is now in session for a trial, Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is also ready, your honor. Normally it's when the prosecution puts forth for opening statement. But before that, the police chief has made a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Oh, he's here. Savage himself. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Algie. Been back to the pool yet? I. His voice is so changeable. So I'm just opening a water here for future drinking. No, I've been trying not to say for my work. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel like I should, we should be grant she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Ooh. This could go well. What's this all about, defendant? I would just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well, well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of a prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Objection. 
You can't. Your Honor, the defense claims does not change your plea. The defendant's plea does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But, Lana. Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to attorney. The prosecution may lack a direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumst circumstantial evidence. I'd like to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. What? Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. The request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need for continuous trial, even though Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for a verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Objection! One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would be certainly would be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand it's a difficult time for you. But why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Oh, things are getting real. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious that some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, huh? Well, not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm, I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears a testimony. Mr. Atra, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need a cont- I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of the truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy f to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court will shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay of you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Skye, please take a stand. Looks like Edgerf has decided to take the horse by the reins. So here we go. The one person who's probably the key to Lana's secret, Emma Skye, is now on to the stand. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Uh, m my name is Emma. Emma Skye. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to ask you to recall those events. Just one more time. Miss Redwood, please remember, this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. This is an incident resolved two years ago. Really, is really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay. He's <laughs> sure given fast. Now, please testify what happened to you two years ago. The t trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. So here we go. We're finally going to be finding out what happened in great detail. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marsh Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Hmm, here we go. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell Mr. Edgeworth. 
What does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no more evidence. He's got no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin his cross examination. So I had a little chuckle just me thinking about how many times in this game we've had no evidence and just bluffed our way out of it. Okay, so let's just, um, little, 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 little press and all of it. I can remember. That's why I just. Why do I always say, little, 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 if I can't remember something? Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was a second command under Deputy Chief of Police Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. The bestest detective. The bestest. I know it said best, but I want to say bestest. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Dyer used to be quite a pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play that day too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Anna promised to take me to dinner after she finished work. So okay, let's ask for a demand. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a serial killer. Joe Dark was bought brought for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get him anything that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Doc proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into the sky in Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Okay, so let's ask her about Neil Marshall now. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there was two people present during the Doc's questioning. Deputy Chief J. Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall just had received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume it was also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I, I don't clearly remember what happened then. But, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instance. Oh, no, I want to know about the answer. That's probably the most important point. A man. Yes, do that. Okay, how did I do back two? Or more? How did I do back that far? That was impressive. Okay, Mr. Marshall jumped in dark just then. The lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So, so the electricity went out. Wait a minute. It was a pitch dark in that room. Shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then the lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of a scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Let's hear more about this. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you and and you told Detective Goodman by what you saw? Yes, but at the time the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before.